Hey guys, what's up? My name is Juan. I am Just One Reader. I am here to share my thoughts on books numbers 37 and 38 that I have read so far this year. So firstly, I have Infinite Home by Kathleen Alcott. This is the story of this apartment building in Brooklyn, and we follow the, the characters who inhabit this building. Um, we have the landlady who is a very old lady who is starting to show signs of dementia or Alzheimer's or some kind of cognitive dysfunction syndrome or disorder or something. And then the rest of the people who live there are also um, flawed in some way or you could classify them as misfits or outcasts. We have a lady who suffers from agoraphobia so she's she just stays indoors forever. Um, we have another man who had a stroke and is paralyzed. We have another man who suffers from depression. We have a young man who has some kind of um, syndrome that I don't really remember what the name of the syndrome was, but it pretty much makes him function in a psychotic or autistic level. Um, so it's a very quirky, colorful, ensemble cast of misfits um, and we follow their their story and their interactions we follow also what happened in their past and what they're doing in the present and what's going on with them this is a very character driven novel and it does not have a lot of plot it does not involve a lot of action or dialogue so if you are the kind of reader who doesn't like very slow paced meandering character driven novels stay away from this. Um, now, I should say, why did I read this book in the first place? So, I originally decided to read this book and I originally picked this book up at the bookstore upon the recommendation of Mercedes from Mercy's Bookish Musings because she had talked about it and how much she had enjoyed it. So, I saw this beautiful, strikingly beautiful copy at the Strand bookstore. It's a signed copy, so it's a big deal for me. And I bought it, I put it on my shelf, I completely forgot about it, and I just completely forgot about its existence. And until very recently that I watched Chris from Chris Bookish Cauldron mention it in a wrap-up, and he really enjoyed it as well. So that made me remember that I owned the copy, um, the signed copy that I had bought in New York. So I read it, and unfortunately, I did not like it. Um, I mean... The premise is original and it's very stylish. The novel is very stylish and the, 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 it, it's, it's such a letdown because the characters really are very compelling and interesting. But the thing that really didn't do it for me was the writing style. Kathleen Alcott's writing style is exactly the, the writing style that I really don't like. It's incredibly over the top, exaggerated, beautiful, purple prose. Um, a, an excessive use of metaphors and um, there's like three adjectives and seven adverbs in each sentence. It's just ridiculous. Um, so I was kind of disappointed by that and I just did not feel engaged or invested in, in the story or the characters at all. And, you know, also talking about how slow paced and character driven this book is, I usually don't mind char very slow, character-driven uh, stories, but this just took it to another level altogether. And I, I thought it was just ridiculously slow and meandering and unfocused. I just thought it was unfocused and I was thinking, what are we doing here? So what is this for? What, where, where are we getting at? So in the end, I think this is a book that you should try to read. Um, it, it's a book that you will either love or hate, depending on whether you get on with the writing style or not, because it is a very particular kind of writing. Um, and as a conclusion, I would like to compare this to other two pieces of art. Um, one book and, and one filmography or uh, yeah a film or a filmography firstly to a book i would like to compare this to lauren groff's novel fates and furies which i read last year or two years before no last year and i really loved it um i think both both of the writing styles um kathleen alcott's and lauren groff's are very similar in a way they are very pretty and with a heavy use of metaphor and imagery and all of that however i just felt 
that Lauren Groff felt genuine and and fluid and it really entranced me and it, it really managed to cast a spell upon me. However, Kathleen Alcott didn't do it for me um, and it's a very personal thing. It just did not happen for me. I felt like I was watching something very fake and very not genuine and not true, um, very fabricated. So that is uh, comparing this book to another book. Now, I would like to compare this book to the filmography of Wes Anderson. So Wes Anderson is a movie director that is very interesting. I really love him particularly. I haven't seen all his movies, but the ones that I've seen have been really important to um, discuss because he he has a very particular style. You can tell when you're watching a movie by Wes Anderson. He just has a look. All of his movies have like a signature look and feel and, and style. And sometimes people complain that he uh, gives more priority or more weight to style over substance. That's pretty much the complaint. And I think that is true for this uh, as well, for Infinite Home by Kathleen Alcott. I thought there was much more style than there was substance. Like we were, she was just masturbating with how beautiful her writing was. And I'm sorry to say that in, in such a blunt way um, and with that word, masturbating, but it just, that's how I felt. I felt like it was just like, come on, just let me enjoy, you know? So I would like to compare this to Wes Anderson, except for the fact that I actually like Wes Anderson because he has that style over substance sometimes, but it works. It works because it feels um, there's an emotional component. For example, the last movie that I saw by Wes Anderson was Isle of Dogs, and it is one of the most stylized, stylish productions I've ever seen. But it's it was so emotional and I was moved and, and deeply touched. It was not the case with Infinite Home. So I gave it two stars. The next book that I read was Pastoralia by George Saunders. This is a collection of short stories and a novella. I gave this five out of five stars and I think it might be my favorite thing that I have read by Saunders alongside 10th of December, which is another one of his collections. I think this uh, this is a more accessible way to, to get started with George Saunders. I think this is, <clears throat> excuse me, I think this was, this is more easy to get into because if you start with 10th of December or Lincoln in the Bardo, those are very experimental, weirder kind of, um, works in terms of the writing. However, and, and also the, you know, he uses a lot of elements from sci-fi and fantasy. Uh, but here in Pastoralia, I think it is more accessible. It is more normal. And he does have some supernatural twists um, and slightly dystopian elements, but they are very subtle and they are very easy to grasp. So, Something that I loved about this collection is that, as always, George Saunders is really concerned with the themes of masculinity and parenthood and family and work and what what being a provider and being the supporter of your family means in our society, uh, gender roles, um, work, which I think I've already said work, but yeah, work is a very, very essential theme in George Saunders' oeuvre. Um, there's a lot of interesting moral, ethical discussions that arise when you're reading a George Saunders collection. Um, uh, the highlight of the book for me was the title story, Pastoralia. It is the uh, one of the best pieces of writing that I have come across in quite a long time. It is the, the, the longest story in this collection. And it is just outstanding because he, I mean, something that George Saunders is the absolute master of is he takes vocabulary um, and the, the most basic common vocabulary and the most simple tools of language, the building blocks of language, if you will. And he manages to create so much out of that. I mean, he is just incredible. And he also, something that he does particularly well in that story, Pastoralia, is he balances the, the tone perfectly. There, 
are sentences that are so devastating and harrowing and full of despair and terror and sadness. And then in the next sentence, he will make you laugh and he will make you smile. And, and you, it's a very, very ambivalent, um, wonderful experience reading George Saunders because you ultimately feel a weird combination of emotions. You are, you, you can, you never end a, a story by George Saunders and feel just one thing. Like, that's incredible. Um, actually, in a previous video, I made a statement that to me, George Saunders is the writer of ambivalence. And I think it is absolutely true. I think that's why he is now one of my favorite writers. He is the writer of ambivalence. He is the author who, in my reading experience, has best portrayed the ambivalence of everyday life and of our modern capitalist individual individualistic society um so yeah if you want to read something by george saunders and you've never read him before i would absolutely recommend that you start with pastoralia now something else that i would recommend if you are going to read pastoralia is don't try to read the collection uh very quickly because something that happens with George Saunders is if you read all of the stories, um, you know, without taking any breaks, uh, I think you kind of lose the element of surprise and the, the kind of Saunders twist. I think it's better if you read a story and then go and read something else for a couple of days and then come back to it and read another story. And it will just make you like it will give you that kind of Saunders surprise. So I gave this five out of five stars. It is one of my favorite books of the year and just an insanely good collection. Guys, thanks for watching. Please leave your comments down below. I will see you next time.